King Brahmadatta was ruling in Benares, in northern India. The Enlightenment being was born as the last of his 100 sons and grew up to be a wise young man. In those days there were silent Buddhas who came to the palace to receive alms food. They were called Buddhas because they were enlightened. They knew the truth and experienced life as it really is, in every present moment. They were called silent because they did not preach the truth. This was because they knew it was a time when no one would be able to understand it. However, being filled with sympathy for the unhappiness of all beings, the silent Buddhas wished to help anyone who asked them. One day the young prince was thinking about his 99 older brothers and wondering if he had any chance to become king of Benares. He decided to ask the silent Buddhas about it. The next day, the silent Buddhas came as usual to collect alms food in the palace. The prince brought purified water and washed their feet. When they had sat down, he gave them appetizers to eat. Before giving the next course, he said to them, I am one hundredth in line to the throne. What are the odds that I will become king of Benares? They replied, O oh, prince, with so many older brothers, there is almost no chance you will ever be king here. However, you might become king of Takasila. If you can get there in seven days, you can become king. But on your way, there is a dangerous forest. You must take the road passing through it, since it would take twice as long to go around it. That forest is known as Devil's Woods, because it is filled with all kinds of devils. He devils, she devils, and even little children, devils. The she devils spend most of their time by the roadside. They use magic to make buildings and entire cities appear along the way. The buildings have ceilings decorated with stars and gorgeous rich couches surrounded by silk curtains of many colours. Sitting on these couches, the she devils make themselves look like the sweetest, most pleasant of goddesses. With words dripping with honey, they attract travellers, saying, You look tired. Come in, sit down, have something to drink, and then be on your way. Those who are persuaded to come in are invited to sit down. Then the she-devils use their beautiful physical appearance to trap their visitors with their own burning desires. After giving in to their desires, the strangers are killed by the she-devils and eaten while their blood is still hot. In this way, those who are attracted by sight are trapped by the physical forms of women. Those who are attracted by sound are trapped by their singing voices and music. Those attracted by smell are trapped by the divine perfumes they wear. Those attracted by taste are trapped by the heavenly tasting delicacies they offer. Those attracted by touch are trapped by their soft luxurious beds and velvet couches. But if you, fair prince, can control all five senses and force yourself to avoid looking at those beautiful, enticing she-devils, only then can you become king of Takasila in seven days. The grateful Bodhisatta replied, Thank you, venerable ones, I will follow your advice. After hearing such warnings, how could I take the chance of looking at them? Then he asked the silent Buddhas to give him special charms to protect him on his dangerous journey through Devil's Woods, so they chanted protective blessings onto a string and some sand. He accepted the charms and paid his farewell respects to them, and then to his royal parents. Returning to his own home, he announced to his household servants, I am going to Takasila to win the kingship, you are to remain here. But five of them said, We also wish to go with you. No, said he, you can't come with me. I have been warned that on the way there are beautiful she-devils who trap people, who can't resist the desires coming from their own five senses. Then they kill their victims and eat them while their blood is still hot. It is far too dangerous for you. I will rely only on myself and travel alone. But the five would not listen. They said, If we go with you, O prince, we will force ourselves to keep from looking at those beautiful she-devils. We will accompany you to Takasila. If you insist, then so be it, said the prince, but keep your determination strong. The she-devils were waiting for them in Devil's Woods. They had already magically formed beautiful villages and cities with lovely houses and palaces along the way. It just so happened that one of the prince's five servants was easily enchanted by the sight of the curves and figures of the bodies of women. So, he began to fall behind in order to admire them. The worried prince asked, Why do you delay, my friend? My feet ache, said the man. Let me sit and rest a while in one of these mansions, then I will catch up with you. My good friend, said the prince, those are she-devils, 
don't chase after them. Nevertheless, blinded by the temptation of the sense of sight, the man replied, My lord, I can't turn away. Whatever will happen, let it happen, giving him one last warning. The prince continued on with the other four. The one who remained behind went closer to the beautiful-looking forms he was so attracted to. After pleasing themselves fully with the man, the she-devils killed him and ate him on the spot. Then they went farther into Devil's Woods and created another mirage of a beautiful mansion. They sat inside and began singing the sweetest melodies, accompanied by the lovely sounds of all kinds of musical instruments. One of the prince's followers was enchanted by the sound of beautiful music, so he too fell behind and was gobbled up by the still-hungry she-devils. Farther down the road they created another magic mansion, filled with the scents of all kinds of divine perfumes. This time, the man who loved sweet smells fell behind, and was eaten as well. Next, the she-devils created a fabulous restaurant, filled with foods, having the most heavenly flavours. Here, the lover of the tastes of the finest delicacies wandered in and was devoured in turn. Then the she-devils went still, farther down the road created soft, luxurious beds and velvet couches, and sat on them. The last of the prince's followers was one who loved the touch of the softest fabrics and the most luxurious comfort. So he too fell behind and met his death, and was quickly eaten by the ravenous she-devils. These events left the enlightenment being all alone in Devil's Woods. A certain she-devil thought, Aha! This one is very strong-minded indeed, but I am even more determined. I will not stop until I have tasted his flesh. So she alone stubbornly followed him, even though the other devils gave up the chase. As she got closer to the edge of Devil's Woods, some woodsmen saw her and asked, Lovely lady, who is it that walks on ahead of you? We are newlyweds, replied the lying demon. He is my too pure husband, who ran away from me on our wedding night. That's why I'm chasing after him. The woodsman caught up to the prince and asked, Noble sir, this delicate, flower-like, golden-skinned young maiden has left her family to live with you. Why don't you walk with her, instead of making her chase after you? The prince replied, Good people, she is not my wife. She is a devil. She killed the five men who followed me and ate them while their blood was still hot. Whereupon the lovely-looking devil said, See how it is, gentlemen. Anger can make husbands call their own wives devils and hungry ghosts. Such is the way of the world. Continuing to follow the prince, the determined she-devil magically made herself look pregnant. Then she seemed to be a first-time mother carrying her make-believe baby on her hip. Whoever saw the pair questioned them, just as the woodsman had. Each time the bodhisattva repeated, She is not my wife. She is a devil. She killed the five men who followed me and ate them while their blood was still hot. Finally, they arrived at Takasila. The she-devil made her son disappear and followed alone. At the city gate, the prince stopped and went into a rest house. Because of the magic power of the charmed sand and string he had gotten from the silent Buddhas, the she-devil was not able to follow him inside. She stayed outside and made herself look as beautiful as a goddess. The king of Takasila happened to see her as he was going to his pleasure garden. Overwhelmed by her beauty, he decided he must have her. He sent a servant to ask if she was married. When he did so, she replied, Yes, my husband is inside this rest house. Hearing this, the prince called out from within, She is not my wife. She is a devil. She killed the five men who followed me and ate them while their blood was still hot. And once again she said, See how it is, sir. Anger can make husbands call their own wives devils and hungry ghosts. Such is the way of the world. The servant returned to the king and told him what both had said, to which the king replied, Unowned goods belong to the king. So he sent for the she-devil and seated her on a royal elephant. After the procession returned to the palace, he made her his number one queen. That evening, the king had a shampoo and bath, ate his supper and went to bed. The demon had her supper made herself look even more beautiful than before, and followed the king to his bed. After pleasing him, she turned on her side and began to weep. The king asked, Why are you crying, my sweetheart? My lord, said she, you picked me up from the roadside. In this palace there are many jealous women, 
They will say, she has no mother or father, no family or country. She was found on the side of the road. Don't let them make fun of me like that, my lord. Give me power over the whole kingdom so none will dare challenge me. My lovely, replied the king, I have no such power over the whole kingdom. My authority is only over those who revolt or break the law. But since he was so pleased by her physical charms, the king continued, My sweetheart, I will grant you complete authority over all who dwell within my palace. Satisfied with this, the new queen waited until the king was asleep. Then she secretly ran off to her home in the city of devils. She gathered together the she-devils, he-devils, and even the hungry little children. Devils. Then she took them all back to the palace. She killed her new husband, the king, and gobbled him up, all except his bones. The other devils ate all the rest who lived in the palace, even the dogs and chickens. Only bones were left behind. The next morning the people found the palace doors locked. Worried, they broke through the windows with axes, went inside, and found human and animal bones scattered around. Only then did they realise that the man in the rest house was right, that the king's new queen was a flesh-eating devil. Meanwhile, the Enlightenment being had protected himself from the murderous she-devil during the night. He had spread the charmed sand on the roof of the rest house and wound the charmed string around the outside walls. At dawn, he was still awake inside, standing alertly with sword in hand. After cleaning up the mess in the palace, the citizens discussed the situation among themselves. They said, The man in the rest house must be master of his senses, since he did not even look at the she-devil's dangerous beauty. If such a noble, determined and wise man were ruling our country, we all would prosper. Let us make him our new king. In unanimous agreement, they went to the rest house and invited the prince to be their king. When he accepted, they escorted him to the palace, seated him on a pile of jewels, and crowned him king. He ruled righteously, following the ten rules of good government. He avoided the four ways of going astray prejudice, anger, fearfulness and foolishness, and he always remembered the advice of the silent Buddhas that had led him to the kingship. Unlike his five unfortunate followers, he had resisted the blind desire for the pleasures of the five senses. Only then could he benefit all his subjects with his wise rule. The morale is... Living only for pleasures of their senses, fools are devoured.